Heaven or Hell? The Red Entrepreneur's Life in China. Hello everyone, it's Michael here. This is our first episode of the Zhong Nanhai program. In all professions, we work hard to make a living. No matter how much you earn, your property is your personal asset and no one can take that away from you. Imagine you or your ancestors investing their entire life working to purchase a property only to have it taken away from you by the government due to a revolution. Today, let's look at a story about one of the top entrepreneurs in China, Rong Yiren, and how the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, took away all he had. Rong's family was very famous during the Republic of China. In those years, two brothers, Rong Zongjing and Rong Desheng, started from nothing and established more than 20 enterprises in Wuxi and Shanghai and were known as the Flower King and the Cotton King for decades, which had a profound impact on China's national economy. Rong Yiren, who was later called the Red Capitalist by the Chinese Communist Party, was the son of Rong Desheng. Born in May 1916, Rong Yiren graduated from St. John's University in Shanghai with a degree in history and then entered the family business, becoming the assistant manager of Wuxi Maoxin Flower Company in 1937. He then went on to become director of the Shanghai Hefeng Enterprise in 1939, director and manager of Shanghai's Sanxin Bank in 1943, and manager of the Wuxi Maoxin Flower Company in 1945. During the late Civil War, the monetary and price restriction policies implemented by the nationalist government triggered serious inflation and a major shock for the Rong's family. Shanghai industrialists moved their capital overseas to find a new way out, and the Rong's family was no exception. Rong Zongjing's eldest sons, Hong Yuan, Hong San, Hong Qin, and De Sheng's sons Eren and Yan Ren left Shanghai one after the other, while De Sheng and his son Yi Ren stayed in the mainland after making hard decisions. It is said that before Eren went to Hong Kong, he and Yiren agreed that one would stay at home and the other would go abroad, and if there were no problems, he could come back. After the establishment of the Chinese Communist Party, Eren returned to China for a short period, but applied to leave the country again in 1951 to travel to the United States. This move helped him avoid subsequent bad luck. Dersheng and Yiren, who remained in China, got support from the Chinese Communist regime at first, such as providing raw materials, purchasing products for processing, etc. Moreover, since Yiren had many relatives overseas, the Chinese Communist Party adopted the cunning strategy of promoting Yiren in order to confuse international countries. First, he was made vice mayor of Shanghai in 1957, and then he became vice minister of the Ministry of Textile Industry. However, in the industrial and commercial reform campaign launched for the purpose of consolidating the regime, the CCP forcibly looted private enterprises under the slogan, implementing public-private partnership in private industry and commerce, and the assets of the Rong family were completely taken away without exception. The provisional regulations on private enterprises, promulgated shortly after the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949, stipulated that in addition to the payment of taxes and the withdrawal of 10% of the provident fund, the private shareholders were to be paid no less than 60% of the balance of the profits of the private company. However, in 1953, the regulations were arbitrarily changed so that private shareholders could only receive 25% of the dividends. In January 1952, the Communist Party launched the five anti-campaigns against private entrepreneurs. If industrialists and businessmen handed over their assets and expressed their support for the Communist Party, they were classified as internal conflicts of the people. If they resented and complained, they were classified as counter-revolutionaries and were designated as targets of the Communist regime. In this process, Entrepreneurs were called to explain their issues day and night, or were taken to private public halls for interrogation and forced to explain their crimes, as they were so called. In this bloody storm, entrepreneurs, small business owners and traders were forced to hand over their assets, and many of them were humiliated and chose to die, including those who committed suicide by swallowing poison and those who jumped from buildings. For the Chinese Communist Party, these instances were just the beginning. In 1954, 
the provisional regulations on public-private joint ventures openly stated that joint ventures are under the leadership of the public. In 1955, the CCP proposed to buy out the capitalists. The so-called redemption was not literally understood. The state would take another sum of money to buy the capitalist enterprise, but would give a small amount of the annual profits from production to the original private owners, which actually meant paying a fixed amount of interest according to the value of fixed assets called fixed interest. Ma Li Cheng mentioned in his book Breakthrough, a record of the new Chinese private economy, that the fixed interest rate was set at 1% to 6% in February 1956 and 5% in July 1956. The fixed interest rate was originally set for seven years, ending in 1962, but later changed to 1965, that is, a total of 10 years. In other words, after the CCP took away the private enterprise owners' properties, it only gave a limited fixed interest rate for 10 years, and the private enterprise became the property of the CCP. What is the difference between this and robbery? In Shanghai, for example, the private shares in its public-private joint ventures amounted to 1.1 billion yuan, amounting for almost half of the private shares in public-private joint ventures nationwide. Among the five large households with private shares of 5 million yuan or more, four belong to the Rong family, the first being Rong Yiren's cousin of Rong Hongsan, who accounted for 9.75 billion yuan and could receive fixed interest of 487,000 yuan per year, or 40,000 yuan per month. Rong Yiren accounted for third place. The Communist Party's move naturally aroused the discontent of many entrepreneurs. In response, the authorities have resorted to threats, criticism and struggle to force them to obey. In January 1956, after Mao Zedong personally visited Yiren's Shenzhen factories, Yiren handed over all of his ancestors' assets, 56 textile, flour and other enterprises. Rong Yiren had followed the party's requirements so well. Did he have a smooth sailing from then on? We will continue in the next episode. Thank you for watching. If you like our show, please like and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. We will see you next time.